What's happening everyone? In this video I'll be introducing the linked list data structure. We'll be using the Python coding language because one, it's my favorite language, and two, its simplicity will allow me to explain more of the high level features of the data structure without having to delve too deep into the lower level functionality. Unlike dictionaries, seen in our prior video, linked lists are not a built-in feature of the Python language. Instead, in this video I'll start off by explaining the basics of the data structure, and later on, we'll get to coding up the actual classes and functions. If you have any suggestions on data structures to cover in future videos, definitely don't hesitate to post a comment. I'll certainly read through them all as well as address any questions you may have. So to start off with, a linked list is essentially a way in which to store data in an ordered manner. If you have any experience with arrays, as you can see in this picture here, this should be a fairly simple idea to understand. The easiest way, in my opinion, to introduce linked lists is to compare them with arrays. In most coding languages, an array is basically a fixed size chunk in memory. This chunk is then subdivided into smaller sections, which can be accessed using indices, starting with the index 0. One of the great benefits to using an array is that we can access any of the addresses or indices in constant time. That is big O of 1 in big O notation. In layman's terms, this means we can pretty much access any of the elements in the array in the same amount of time, be it at the first index or at the millionth index. The reason being, we only need to calculate a single memory address, then instruct the computer to pull the data at that address for any spot in the array. So for example, if this were an array here, these uh, shaded green blocks, the indices above them are what you would use to index into each one of the green blocks. So this would be the data at the zeroth index, first index, all the way on up to however large the array may be. In this case, the array length is 10. The only true connection between the elements of an array lies in the fact they are slotted next to each other in memory. You can think of the Python list object as being an array-like data structure. The linked list, on the other hand, has no strict linear ordering in memory. Instead, the ordering of the elements is controlled by the data structures which contain each one of the individual elements. Rather than each element having its own fixed size block in memory, slotted in next to its neighbors, the linked list uses a data structure called a node to wrap each one of its elements. Along with the stored element itself, this node structure contains the metadata that sews the whole linked list together. The node contains, for one, a pointer to the next element in the list. You can think of the pointer as either the memory address of the next node or the next node itself. Suffice to say, the node has the knowledge of how to get to the next node. As you can see in the picture, the last node can be identified as the last node because its next node pointer is set to null. There are two common forms of the linked list, both shown in the picture. The first is the one we have just described and is called a singly linked list. The other is the doubly linked list. The only difference being that the doubly linked list nodes contain pointers to the prior element in the list as well as the next. In this picture we can see the efficiency of various operations using both the singly and doubly linked lists. Pause the video now and jot down this information if you need it for an exam. Take note of the comparisons here between the linked list and array data structures. I'll now switch over to a coding editor so we can begin developing the underlying node and linked list data structures and algorithms. Okay, so the first data structure we're going to be implementing is the node class. Fairly simple, just contains two elements. We'll be passing in uh, a data point or an element to be stored by this node in the constructor. Um, and by default it'll be set to none. So this is where we're going to be storing the uh, past data point, and this is where we'll be storing the pointer to the next node. Um, as you can see in the constructor, we're initializing this to none, uh, which makes sense if you recall that the last element in the uh, linked list is always going to have its next pointer set to none. So by default, we'll set it to that, and then if we have a child node be attached to the end of this node, we'll then update this variable as such. The next uh, data structure we're going to be creating is going to be called the linked list class. And this is basically a wrapper that wraps over these nodes. Um, so the user is never actually going to interface with this node class. This is just going to be a subclass of the linked list. 
Okay, so here in the constructor, we're always going to want to have our head node um, available inside of the linked list. The head node is never going to contain any actual data, and it's not going to be indexable. Um, in other words, the user isn't going to be able to access this head node. This is just going to be simply used as a placeholder to allow us to point to the first element in the list. So when we're first creating our list, we're going to have a list of length 0. And so don't get confused. Even though we do have a single node in our length list, this actually isn't going to be one of the data nodes. Now, the first uh, uh, function we're going to want to implement is probably going to be the, uh, the append function, um, which is going to function similarly to the append function in the uh, list object built into Python. This is going to be adding on a new data point to the end of the current list. And so obviously when the linked list is first created there's not going to be any elements so the append function will be what's used to create the first element of the list. We'll be passing in the data point. Now first we're going to be creating a new node of the class node and obviously passing the data into that which as you can recall, we'll set the data point inside of the node. We'll now be creating a variable to store the node that we're currently looking at. So we'll just call that cur is equal to self.head because we're going to start obviously at the left or leftmost point of the list. And now we're going to iterate over each one of the nodes in the list, starting with uh, the head. And then once we get to a point where the next node of the current node is none, we know that that's going to be the last node in the list, at which point we can insert our new node as the next node in the prior node. So iterating while the next element of the current node is not equal to none, just traverse through the list. And now once we know we're at the last element of the list, we can set the next node equal to our new node. Um, the next function we're probably going to want to implement is going to be a function to figure out uh, the length of our length list, um, which is obviously very useful if you're trying to manage uh, the nodes in the list. Um, or if you just want to figure out how large the data structure is that you're working with. So we'll call this one length, uh, not passing any parameters other than obviously the instance of the class. Uh, we'll be creating another um, variable to point to our current node, and obviously again we'll set that equal to head. We'll create another variable to contain the total number of nodes we've seen, so at this point we have zero. And now we're going to begin iterating over our nodes. Incrementing the total. And then traversing to the next node. And then here, once we're done, um, obviously we'll be exiting once we know that we're at the last node, which you can tell, once again, because uh, the next node will be equal to none. So once we're done with this iteration, um, or all the iterations of this loop, we'll know that our total variable will contain the number of elements in our list. So we can return that. The next function we'll be creating is kind of just a helper function just to uh, help us along while we're creating the rest of the functions. And that's going to be a function we can use to display the current contents of our list. Um, after which we can test and play around with our uh, length and append functions. So we'll call this one display, not pass any parameters. We're going to be, just for now, creating a list of elements we've seen. Um, set a new variable for our current node we're looking at. Set that equal to head. And then we're going to begin traversing over the nodes while the current node, the next element in the current node is not equal to none. Uh, set the current node equal to the next node, and then append the data of the current node to our list of elements we've seen. 
then at the end of this iteration, or this uh, loop here, we're going to be printing out the elements we've come across. So now we can uh, play around with our length list that we've created so far, just to test it out and make sure that our two append and length functions work properly. Uh, we can begin by just creating an instance of our length list, call it my list. Um, and first we'll just display it. Switch over to our uh, command prompt and run the file. Okay, so as we expected, um, obviously at this point we have nothing in the list. Let's try appending on an integer. Just append on one. Um, try appending on a second integer as well. And then display it again. Perfect. So now we can see we've added in our two elements and we can see them printed nicely as a, uh, a list in the Python list object format. The next function we'll be implementing will be a extractor function. Um, in essence, we want to be able to pull out a data point at a certain index from our linked list, and this will be the function we'll be using to do that. Uh, we'll call it a get function, pass in the index at which we want to extract the data from. First thing we want to do here is just have a small check to make sure that the index that the user passed um, is not out of the range or out of the length of our, uh, our linked list. Um, so we can say if index is greater than or equal to the length, uh, we'll just print out an error message. Get index out of range. And then uh, for now, we can just return none. So now, um, you're probably getting the hang of this already. In pretty much every one of the linked list functions, you're going to have to do some sort of iteration over the elements of the list. And obviously, that's the downside that you get when you switch over from having a structured data type, such as an array or a list, over to one that's more relational. So we'll begin by creating a variable to contain the current index we're looking at. Set that equal to zero. Uh, once again, another variable to contain the current uh, node we're looking at, which is going to start with the head, and then begin the iteration here, um, incrementing the current node by setting the current node equal to the next node. And now here we're going to be check if the current index is equal to the index that was provided by the user. Then we know we're at the data point that we want to extract. We'll say return current node dot data. Simple as that. And then otherwise, we're going to be incrementing our current index. And we don't have to worry about the fact that this is a uh, pretty much a forever loop because we already checked to make sure that the index they provided was not longer than the length of our uh, our list so far. So now I can write some helper code here to make sure our new get function works properly. Uh, we'll obviously again create a linked list. Uh, we can append on some data. Append on one, two, three, and four. Just print this out again to make sure it looks appropriate. Perfect. Now let's try doing printing um, element at second index. We'll do my list dot get index of two. Okay. So the element at the second index, so 0, 1, 2, is 3, and we've reported that correctly here. So now I can go on and implement the last function we'll be implementing in our linked list, uh, which will be an erase function to um, erase a node at a certain provided index. So we'll call that erase, pass in the index we would wish to erase at. 
And uh, once again, we're going to be checking to make sure that the index they provided is not longer than the actual linked list that we have so far. And we would just return if that was the case. Um, so once again, we're going to obviously be using same notation here to begin our iteration. Um, start the loop. And in this case, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be saving uh, the current node as uh, what we can call our last node. We're going to need to do this because when we're erasing a node, um, say for example if we wanted to erase 3, uh, we have to do a little bit of bookkeeping to make sure that after we've erased 3, the next node in 2 points to the appropriate spot at 4. So last node equals current node, and then we'll increment current node by setting it equal to the next node. Now here we want to check and see if we're at the index that the user provided, in which case we're going to want to delete the node. So we don't even actually have to delete the current node. All we have to do is change the pointer from the last node to be the one skipped past the current node. So we can say last node.next is equal to current node.next. And so effectively this is going to be erasing current node. And then return. And then if we weren't at the current index yet, at the index the user provided, we're going to be incrementing our current index to reflect the fact that we've incremented our current node. Now we can add in some helper code once again to make sure that our erase function works properly. Uh, we'll just append in some data after creating our linked list. Just make these a little bit differentiated. Display this before we erase anything. Now we can erase the element at index 1 which should erase our 1, and then we can display this again to make sure it worked properly. Okay, cool. So as you can see, um, after having inserted our five elements, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, obviously we have now a length list of length 5. Um, and then after calling our erase function at the first index, which is this index here, now we're left with a list of only length 4, where the 1 is now gone. So, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, if you'd like me to create a GitHub repository for the code in this lesson, uh, post a comment. Um, if I end up doing that, I'll also post that in the description, probably also post a comment on the video so you guys can check that out. Um, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these videos in the future. Also, I'd recommend checking out the uh, video I did on dictionaries in Python um, if you're interested in that. It's another data structure that's very useful um, in numerous algorithms and uh, it's also very efficient too. So keep that in mind. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.